How's it going YouTube? Got another Ganzo. People seem to like my Ganzo videos, so I made another one. I bought another one. This is the FB7651-GRA for gray. I wish they'd actually use names. It's a little bit easier to remember, but like most Ganzos, you get a little bag. That's about it. The box is pretty sturdy, I guess. And here's the knife. Another crossbar lock. This one was $23.95, $24. I do believe there's several colors of it, but there's three on Amazon right now. I'll put them up on the screen. They all cost the same. Yeah, Amazon's the best place to get these two. You can get them from AliExpress. You can get all the colors there, but you gotta wait forever from China. And a couple retailers have them too, but Amazon's the go-to place. You got a 3.3 inch 440C blade. So not D2 like most of their knives. You got a satin finish with a little bit of a lower flat grind. You can tell by just by the grind that this isn't going to be the thinnest blade behind the edge. But not every blade can be a super slicer. Um, drop point. Yeah, good looking blade. The uh, handle kind of reminds me of a Benchmade, but the blade does not look like a Benchmade. Or at least it's enough with this handle. So yeah. You got a 3mm blade stock or 0.12 inches. Let's see how it cuts. All the Ginzas I've bought up until this point have been really sharp. This one seems to be sharp in some places really sharp in the first top of the blade the bottom half needs a little work it's not very consistent the blade being a bit thicker probably affects that somewhat too got an overall length of 7.8 inches so pretty much full size close to it only got one ganzo out compare it to the FH-61 way bigger than it and then the K bar dozier the only two knives I got to compare it to in the same price range bigger than both of those I got the Sincut sachet pretty about almost the same size Spider Co Tenacious. Very, very close as well. And I got two more crossbar locks to compare it to. They both cost quite a bit more though. This one's $59. The Bustied Raccoon. close to the same length and the Kaiser Escort cost about five times this uh, but it's about the same size got a handle length of 4.56 inches 0.51 inches wide and the clothes width in the pockets 1.23 inches T6 on the body screws, which it looks like I forgot to put one back in. I guess I'm slacking, but I did already take it apart. And what's really great about this knife is it's easy to get to the springs. You can take off this side and this side of the pivot, kind of like the Kaisers do. And you, you can adjust it or lube up your bearings really easily. And this one does come with bearings. The last one I did was on washers, so glad to see that. You got a weight of 3.5 ounces and some weight relief on the inside. You got a reversible deep carry clip. It's inset with flat screws and you got a cover plate on the other side. Always love to see that. 
It's lefty friendly. It'll make people happy. And they did that all for $24. You got $100 knives that can't do that. Got this gray G10. It's quite a bit of texture, actually. Yep, at least for G10. And it is the crossbar lock, like I said. They call it a G lock. Um, maybe it's because it takes a gorilla to unlock it, but it's not really that, that strong. But a lot of people are going to get this knife and do this. Yep. They're going to think it won't close all the way. Because if you just, if you're a sissy with it, it'll, it will not close all the way. You definitely got to open and close this knife like a man. Because the springs are stronger. A little bit harder to reverse flick. But you can do it if you got a girlfriend. <laughs> oh. Uh, only deployment options, of course, are these studs and crossbar lock. Do have a lanyard hole and a backspacer. Always like to have a backspacer. The liners are not inset though, unfortunately, but it's $24. You can't expect too much. And you do not have a sharpening tool on this one. I feel like the last few have. Yeah. This is an older model. A lot of the newer stuff is improved. Yeah, easy to assemble. Doesn't have a sharpening tool. Could be a little sharper, but stainless steel. Wish they did all of them in 440C. Um, well, it's to say. Uh, I'd say it's fairly comfortable. The clip is a little bit of annoying. If you're doing long periods of cutting, it may bug you. But other than that, it's pretty good. <laughs> Let's go over my dislikes. Like on all the Ganzos, I don't really like this Firebird logo. That's just me. It says all it needs to say right here. Um... Springs are strong. They're too strong for me, but it's not like enough that, I'm, that it's a big deal. But a lot of people, this, they're not going to be able to use this knife properly. On um, the studs, they are almost even with the scale. So it's a little bit harder to get to them. Not as comfortable as I'd like it to be. Not uncomfortable either, though. And the clip, it's just the standard clip that's on a lot of budget knives. It's never really that comfortable. And of course, I always like inset liners, but it's just a preference. I'd love to see Ganzo produce more knives than they do. They only do like one a year, and they haven't done any crossbar locks in a while. Love to see them try that, or even maybe a button lock. Yeah, that's all I got for this video. This knife will be linked down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And check out my Instagram and leave me a like or a comment. See you in the next one.